here we are again at Connecticut and Inn, where a 12 inch water main from 1947 has burst yesterday. Yesterday was a sunny, warm day. Today's going to be hot, humid, with afternoon thunderstorms and eventually hail. So that will be interesting for this construction. Anyway, uh, a water main from 1947, 12 inch water main burst. That happens in Northwest DC all the time. I've actually sold people houses where immediately after they bought them, lovely historic Chevy Chase and American University Park. Um, a water main would break and flood the whole bottoms of this house and insurance would pay for it to be rebuilt nicer than it was before with better hardwood floors. But um, this time it broke on this major boulevard. <laughs> created this giant hole in the road that they're repairing. A sinkhole that collapsed inward. Uh, big enough to swallow a car. And of course what's really interesting about this is that uh, this neighborhood is um, busy. It's down between DuPont Circle and the K Street Corridor where all the lobbyists are. In fact, the building right across the street there that's got the little curve in it, pretty sure is the lobby for the National Association of Broadcasters. Anyway, so they're trying to dig this out. I don't know how long it'll take to fix. They've been working on it for like 48 hours now. I thought if I came early in the morning, I might actually be able to take a better picture of the hole, but apparently that's not really possible. They won't, you know, I, don't, I don't think they'll be happy if I walk right up to it. we will come again tomorrow. Anyway, one of the things that happened was this garage flooded. Uh, the lower level, I think, was completely underwater and they had to move the cars out. I don't know how much they were damaged. Anyway, the interesting thing about this, of course, is that DC built a giant, beautiful new convention center a few years ago that takes up four city blocks. It's so big that uh, I'm not sure there's ever been an event that actually used it all up. I'm sure they're hoping that, like, the Democratic Party or maybe even the Republican Party will hold a convention there. Strangely enough, the only thing I've ever been to at it is a Tea Party convention for Americans for Prosperity. And even they, I mean, they could use, like, maybe one and a half floors in one quadrant of the building. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, D.C., of course, had this real estate appreciation like most of the rest of the country, but it was worse here or better, depending on how you look at it, than anywhere else except for Silicon Valley. Real estate in all the neighborhoods right around where we are appreciated 25% a year from about 96 to around, uh, I'm sure it slow, started slowing down in like 2003 or 2005, but it didn't come to an end until 2008. And I actually think still appreciate between one and 4% a year in this area. Um, and every time $100,000 worth of real estate transacted, there's ABC is also here reporting somewhere, uh, <laughs> my competitors. Every time $100,000 worth of real estate uh, transacted in D.C., you would, uh, the city would get $2,200, $2,200, 1.1% from the seller and 1.1% from the buyer. Since things have slowed down and the city was so addicted to this huge influx of cash, uh, including a lot of wealthy yuppies who have no kids and don't even use the public schools who are moving in at that time, buying all this appreciating property. We work for Homeland Security and other government agencies expanded by Clinton and Bush and now Obama. Uh, this is just a wash of money. But it didn't repair its shoddy schools that are full of asbestos and have uh, one working girls' room and one working boys' room, sometimes in a school with a thousand kids. And it didn't do anything about water mains and it didn't do anything much about streets. What it did was build a new convention center and have some city council people who have um, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on themselves and gone to prison for it lately. Anyway, so that's what they did with the money. That's central planning for you because. Nobody's losing any profits from not selling people water or not charging them a toll to go down the street. It can happen anywhere at any time and there's no incentive to stop it. 
uh, just like the schools educate badly and aren't safe, and there's no incentive to be otherwise because the kids and their parents are all captives. Anyway, that's DC for you. Uh, an entirely democratically run city, 95%. And this is how they deal with infrastructure and infrastructure budget.